All right, so we're starting on the front porch roof deck thing. And uh, first thing that we got to do is unfortunately pour some concrete footings here. We decided to make this a freestanding deck because we got this stone veneer. We didn't want to cut that out, just open up a lot of problems. And we couldn't install the helical piles here because we had the steps here and I wasn't ready to tear those out yet. So um, we just have two concrete footings that we have to do. This reminds me just a million times over why we love helical piles. We don't have to dig the holes, wait for the inspector, pour the concrete. But anyway, we got the inspection this morning. What I'm doing to uh, figure out our height, because this is going to be pretty low, our beam is going to sit directly on top of our footing. What do you think? Is that a good way to go, Bodie? I agree. Uh, what I've done is take a zip level measurement. So this is my zero point right here. We've zeroed it out now. We can go onto our tube and I've leveled this and packed dirt around it. So it's really solid, it's not gonna move. And we've got minus 14 here. So top of our uh, tube is 14 inches below our threshold. What you need to figure out is your total height requirements for where the footing needs to sit. We have a six inch step out of the door, then one inch for decking, nine and a half for joists, 11 and a half for our beam, and then one inch standoff for our six by plate. So that's 29 inches. I need to be 29 inches down from here right now. I'm only 14. So I need to measure down 15 inches. So I've got to clear out a little bit of dirt here. I'll make a mark on this, and then I'll show you how we get a nice clean line around it. I will use the uh, zippy tool, cut this down, and then we can just fill it with concrete. We know we're at the exact height we need and our beam will sit directly on top of our footing. So this one needed to come down 15 inches off the top. So I've just made three marks on this around the outside, 15 inches down. Now, how are you gonna get a nice clean line around that? You know, circle, it's pretty tough. I'll show you. <laughs> like all over the place. It's kind of hard to do it around a circle. So, cut off the top of your tube. Now, make sure you trace it with the factory flat side. I'm gonna wrap this around here, and we've got a mark here. Good. So now, we've got this nice clean line all the way around. Just go, cut it, and we should be good. There you go. We've got our uh, form in there, We've got a nice clean cut on it. Now we can just fill it right up to the top. Our post base is gonna go directly on top of that and then our beam is gonna sit on it. We'll be at the right height to just frame. We don't have to mess with little tiny six by sixes to get us to the right height. Super easy, not as easy as helical piles. So kind of hate doing this, but best way to go about it if you are using concrete. Ka-chow! We watch a lot of Lightning McQueen cars. Kids really into that right now, so good job. Concrete stuff. A little bit of water got in the hole and then I dumped some and then it, sh it like went around the out, shot right up like 12 feet in the air. It was crazy. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Concrete footings suck. Got a nice little water feature happening here. So uh, that's cool.
There you go. Got a little bit of water action happening here uh, in the irrigation pipe, and that must be the main there. So uh, we know that this is going to need to be rerouted, but uh, we hit the main. That's going to always have water flowing through it. Uh, your periphery pipes that are going to go to your zones are uh, just going to have water in them, but they're not going to have water flowing. So when you hit the main, you're going to have water just continually shooting out of that. That's why you want to know where your shutoff is. Uh, so we know where that's at. We shut it off. We're good. And uh, we'll just reroute some stuff. Irrigation's a pain, man. Huge pain. God. But look at that. Look how fast it's draining. That's good. It's pretty sandy, so... Uh, you know, the water's, the water's moving out of here pretty quickly, which which is good. All right, well, we got the, uh, this is almost dug out. Yeah. My boy Cedric's coming by later. Today or this week? He said he was going to stop by today to scope oh, this out. Check, check it out, okay. We got a concrete specialist coming in for this job because you know what happened on the last one, the countertop. You need some creep boys in here. We need, some, yeah. we need creep boys. We need creep. Nah. Creep got it. us. I ain't creeping it. <laughs> All right, so this is almost excavated. Uh, I think we might wait to do stone on here because he can pour that wall. Yeah. And it's small enough where we can just like dump inside of it and rake. You know what I mean? Since he's got to do the pier footings, we're going to have this sunken fire pit area. We're going to build concrete walls uh, and they're going to go into footings in the ground. So we'll have like three foot deep pier footings throughout the wall and it's going to be all monolithic. So it'll be tied to those footings with rebar and uh, that way the concrete structure is sitting on a frost footing under our frost depth. So uh, we'll wait on the stone till till he gets that perimeter done, and then uh, I guess next step is going to be what? I have no idea. This is not, this is not my uh, jam right here. No, I mean not this stuff. The, the car, what's next, carpentry wise? Jump out front? Oh yeah, hundred percent. We're poured, right? All right. Yeah. Yeah. You want to? Tomorrow morning we'll build it. You want to show the people what you did? You sure? Are they ready? I don't know. Oh boy. Did you, cut, did you cut the bottom? Yeah, I cut it. Oh, all right. <laughs> we actually got one comment on this on the last video saying, I thought you were going to cut that all out of one board. Well, Ant was ahead of you. This one? No, that's a bunch no, of different pieces. That's a bunch. Is this one? That's a bunch of different pieces, I think. Oh. <laughs> this is one board. Folded in and out. Careful measurements. Fits right on the step. Not too bad. You done good, Aunt. You did. done real good. Proud of myself on that. One. Whew. Yeah, I mean one one tiny little little discrepancy in measurement, and it's pretty much all messed up. But uh, looks just like that one. That's a beauty. The miter master, miter fold master. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass, pass the pass baton. Up. I don't know what to do with this. I'm just gonna take it home. You don't have good internet here. That's a problem. <laughs> Fan problems, am I right? Oh, <laughs> God. All right, well, uh, send that out. We got one more to send out. Yeah. Design stuff. You know, we got to take care of biz Back while we're taking care of biz. You know what I'm stuff. saying? We'll send those out and then uh, you want to be belt on today? I want to get out of this van with anything. It's going to be like 81 degrees today. It's going to be beautiful out. Let's get to some hardscaping. Is that what we're doing today? Or uh, yeah, I guess whatever. <laughs> Either up, one. We can frame up the front porch today? Uh, yeah, that's what they're going to jump on as soon as possible. Everyone probably should see this. This is from Anthony Lombardo. <laughs> a text message to me. World's best boss. So. <sighs> I like how they're all capitalized, like it's an official title. As soon as that concrete dumpster gets picked up, I will call for the three-quarter stone. And we can start, we can start on our prep. 
Okay, we're not framing. What are, we're yeah, clearing out some dirt. We can clear out some dirt. We can start on that. We also need to set those those six by sixes by the sunken fire pit area for our pergola oh, structure thingy. Okay, okay. Um, and okay. those are going to kind of dictate the outside dimensions of our wall, so it'll give Cedric a format for where he's going to pour that wall. So I think that'll be. Have you told the people about Cedric and how he's going to be doing concrete work? I did. We're gonna we're gonna bring in a pro on <laughs> on this concrete. Uh, cool. And yeah. so we got a front porch going on here. We've got a uh, same type of pergola roof coming off the top, and we're really dictating the size off of. Our roof here because we're going to keep this gable we're going to attach to that and then that's going to dictate the edges of our deck structure underneath so what we need to do is get a mark and then plumb that down so uh I'll show you how we do that and we should be good to go we should be pretty excited about this because uh we're going to give the whole front of this house like a whole facelift we're going to not only be building the porch and the roof but we're going to be taking off these old angles what do you call these type of a scallop? It's like a fake scallop cedar shake type, I don't know, situation. I don't like it. So uh, we're taking those down. We're taking them down underneath of the bay window. And we're going to replace that with some nice Lost Trail UFP edge, thermally modified. Up here, down there, we're going to have some black accents. It's really going to bring this house into the 21st century. It's going to be beautiful. holes back there for those six buys so uh you good no, it's got steam on it. perfect String line because we need we're gonna hang it off of that six by and it needs to be uh, it needs to be square off of that string line, string line yep and a piece of rebar and I guess a hammer of some sort I was this is where the post gonna go we need I need to be beyond that post because then I'll mark a line on the string all right check it again okay that looks good can you grab me another hammer Okay, check it one more time, please. Why are you saying sorry? I work here. It's literally my job to do things like this. Oh, okay. Here's a little tip for you. Tying off your uh, string line, super easy. I'm not good with knots. I'm not very good at them. <laughs> so anyway, just wrap it around a couple times. And then uh, all you're going to want to do, pull the string over top. That's it. Friction holds it or something, right? And then if you want, you can just do it one more time. Super, super easy, nice and tight. And then you can just take it right off. I don't want to get dirt in it again. We're gonna need it in like two minutes. <laughs> I think you can limo under this? <laughs> I don't think so. Pretty confident I can. Really? Yeah. No way. I'll give you five dollars if you can. Oh, the wide stance. That's how you limbo. <laughs> now I'm not sure. I'm not good at limbo at all. 
<laughs> I think I overestimated my ability. Yeah, I'd say so. Your head's got to go back. Because <laughs> you weren't even like... Do you want to try it? No, I, I already said I'm terrible at limbo. Your knee already touched. Paralyzed in fear. It's a short fall. It's not gonna hurt. I already touched it. <laughs> the hole's gotta be, uh, I'd say, at least like 16 inches round. All right, right? Yeah. Okay, yep. This ain't even gonna be fair. Who she's messing with? Sabotage me with this torch and shovel! You want to learn a little bit? You don't want to be pulling loose dirt out of the hole with this. So you want to break it up real nice. It's good hole digging knowledge. So then when you're pulling it out of the hole, easy. getting our posts set we want these set in the ground I know we're gonna get those people you don't want the post to touch the uh, earth because it's gonna rot out these are treated for ground contact so it's not gonna be an issue and what we want to do is dig this nice big hole it's gonna give us that lateral stability on the post because it's only gonna be tied in by a few connections so um, that's gonna give it some strength we've got three bags of dry concrete in the bottom of the hole uh, we'll put some water on it, but for the most part, it'll suck the moisture out of the surrounding dirt. It'll get hard as a rock. Um, and then we're going to fill up the top back with the dirt, and we can pack this in so that it's nice and solid, and it's going to stay plumb in both directions as that concrete sets up. Last thing that I'm gonna do here uh, before we start prepping our base is I have some type S mortar, which is uh, has lime and Portland cement. Uh, it's gonna help dry this out a tiny bit and it's also going to change the chemical composition of the soil a little bit. It's mostly sand, but a tiny bit of clay here uh, and we want this to be draining really nice. So what we're gonna do, spread out that type S mortar, rake it into our soil and our subgrade here is pitched about two inches to this side. So uh, the water that goes through, if any piles up, we're gonna have about 10 inches of base material. Uh, it's gonna flow to this side. It's not gonna back up uh, towards the house or anything. The soil drains really well, and only thing that's gonna drain into here is the fire pit area. It's gonna be roughly at our existing grade. We're just creating a step down, so uh, we're not really creating a low spot, but uh, we're gonna have all permeability on top and uh, about 10 inches of base drain in here and anything that does hit the subgrade and doesn't drain immediately is going to pitch this way. Here, we are going to be attaching our ledger for our pergola roof uh, to this dormer that's on top of the house. 
This is just a faux dormer. It's on top of the sheathing of the roof. So uh, when we pulled it apart, it was just gypsum sheathing. So not something solid to screw to. Um, and also the studs were on the flat. So we decided to just rip all that down. Ant right now is reframing that. And then we're gonna sheath the whole thing with plywood. So uh, we have a nice structure to attach our ledger to. We have blocking everywhere it needs to be. And then uh, instead of the gypsum, we'll uh, you know just do plywood, uh, house wrap, all that good stuff. Because on top of that, we're gonna have some UFP edge above a pergola going up the roof. It's gonna be pretty sick. So should have this patched back up, ready to move forward here pretty soon. Well, we've had a lot of people ask about the hiring process and we did get a new guy, but it um, didn't last too long. It's hard to work here. Did you have fun though? Well, we're uh, figured in the spirit of Halloween. Uh, we had to open up the uh, roof here, so we're gonna put uh, Monty, that's what we named him. We're gonna put Monty up there, uh, close him in. So if anybody ever has to, you know, resheathe this roof at any point in the future, uh, I'm gonna find a nice little surprise. I'm going to. How's that? <laughs> Starting to make quite a mess out here, which means we're making some good progress. Why don't we have Ant uh, describe a little bit? Because I can tell he's in like kind of a pretend spicy mood today. He's not really, really mad, but he's kind of acting grumpy. So this will. I think it's the heat. I think we're getting the heat. Like, <laughs> it's like heat. Like beautiful out today. Now, so we got a standard pergoler going up. We have a two by eight ledger lag to the half, and then we have a triple two by twelve beam on these six buys. And then Jose right now, he's going to throw some structural lags together to tighten up that beam. And once that's done, we can put our concealed hangers on, run some rafters. They're going to be two foot on center. And we can prep for a nice polycarbonate, corrugated, standing seam style roof covering. Nice little modern design for a modern man. I'm your modern man. I'm your man, modern. Whoa. We're gonna have this thing going up. Uh, I'm excavating for uh, this nice walkway here. This design, check it out. It's gonna be, it's gonna be really sweet. We've got this nice little juxtaposition of several squares, and uh, you know, staggering off to the driveway. I think it's gonna be pretty sick. That's a real word. That's a real word, Ant. I love when he's like fake spicy. No. <laughs> no, find center. So you're gonna go 12 inches to the right and 12 inches to the left. Or not the, not the screw in the middle. Okay. No, because our rafters are going there. You're going to go 12 and 12 and then go two foot on center. This front coming together really beautifully here. Putting another coat of stain on here. What we like to do with the, the pergola here when we stain it is get a coat on there so it covers the majority of it and then we get it up there. Obviously it's gonna have nicks and scratches and all that kind of stuff. We'll put another coat on it. So that's what we're doing right now, but it makes it a lot easier and you get that full coverage. This thing is coming together beautifully. We're gonna work on some columns. We've got these really cool details up here, but let me show you what's going on in the backyard right now. We're forming up right now for our concrete wall sunken fire pit situation thing we got here. 
And this time we're not gonna mess it up. We're not gonna have cracked concrete like we did on the last job because we got a pro here. We got Cedric from the final impression, my man, throwing down some creep for us. But you're gonna have to wait for the next vlog for that. We're gonna be doing some concrete. We're gonna be doing some hardscape. We're gonna be doing all kinds of cool stuff. So make sure you hit subscribe, stay tuned. And until next time, this has been Premier Outdoor Living.